We're going to look at Python using math. So let's consider a simple equation in math. 5 plus 3. How do you write it in Python? If you haven't been doing any Python programming or you're too, totally new to Python, you'll be you know, quite relieved to hear that this is how you write in Python. It is quite simple. And let's say I give you a few more examples. 5 minus 3, 5 multiplied by 3. 5 divided by 3, or you can just say 5 divided by 3 in math, in this way you have the fraction. Um, in Python, it is as simple as you expect. 5 minus 3, 5 asterisk 3, 5 divided by 3, and this one is also the same thing, 5 divided by 3. So, quite simple, you have experience in math, right? So that is pretty much operators in a nutshell. So next, we're going to talk about variables in Python. So we're just going to pivot on math again. So let's consider the following instructions in math. All right, x equals to 5, y equals to 7, and z equals to 3. Then at the end, x equals to 2. Is this valid? Now, it, it was valid until you get x equals to 2 again, because you cannot have x at two points in your instructions, it doesn't make sense. Is x equals 5, is x equals 2, it doesn't make sense. However, in programming, what we refer to as instructions is how we execute it in the first place. So let's consider these instructions again. So let's consider this. Let's say we execute it from the top to bottom. And, you know, by logic, you would understand that, let's say we execute it in this order, x equals to 2 because you execute this last, and y equals 7, z equals 3. So now what we're going to do is we're going to refer to these things as something more detailed. Okay, so let's consider an example where you are dealing with sales. So at the very top of your you know, program, you just define x as equals to 1000, the number of customers. So you just don't know how to really name it, so you just resort to x, and that's fine. Let's say you do this you do this 100 line code here just to evaluate how much sales you're going to make per unit. However, at the very end, you're just like wondering, okay, how many customers do I have again? You're going to sift through how many lines of code to find out that, you know, this actually means the number of customers. I know you can just put a comment here, like say your comment here is, okay, this one's the number of customers. It is not descriptive enough because you still have to sift through 100 lines of code to find out what is the actual value. So the solution, very simple, you just name customers equals to 1000. And most of the editors, let's say you just do even a thousand line of code. You have never used this variable customers yet. And at the very end, you want to find out how many customers you need. So you can just type in C-U-S-T, you know, I probably name it custom something. And, you know, you would just pop up, you know, it would just have a tooltip that pops up that, okay, you already have this defined customer. So customer, sorry. And then you can calculate the price, let's say the price per unit and so on. You have a lot of factors that goes into this. And this is why it's important to, you know, name your variables very clearly instead of just using x, y, z, because you would definitely run out of them. Okay, so now what we are using is actually Jupyter Notebook. This is going to be very important because you're going to be using this interface for quite a fair bit of the MLDA courses after this. I think it's good to get used to how to actually write Python code and the shortcuts to this. So the shortcuts is, one. let's say you want to evaluate 1 plus 2. Very simple, right? When you press enter, it doesn't do anything. What you do is you press shift enter. And what it does is that it evaluates it, then gives you another line. So it's quite simple. You can actually play around with this and you will notice that it also follows the PEMDAS thing where it evaluates division first, then it evaluates the plus. So I'm just going to give you a, sh a very short example. Uh, 3 plus 4 divided by 7. If it doesn't follow PEMDAS and it does it from left to right, it should evaluate to 1, right? But no, it evaluates to something else. Yeah, quite simple. You can play around with this. Now, a lot of shortcuts that you can use in Jupyter 
it is easy to kind of see what are the shortcuts you can get by clicking on this little keyboard in the top middle here, right? Or you can find it in help, I think. Oh yeah, you can find it in help. You can also edit your shortcuts. One thing to be wary about is that let's say you are evaluating multiple statements. You can do this, one plus four, one plus eight. So you expect five and nine, right? But it only returns nine press 1 plus 4 and then 1 plus 8 right let's say you have a list of numbers that you want to evaluate let's say you have hundreds the only way to list down hundreds is to force python to print them out and it is exactly that word so you print something out it's going to be the same thing might as well just press 3 right but you can also print 3 and you'll print 3 so now you can actually print three and let's say you want to print something else five plus three i don't know and so on you can try it out on your own and then it prints everything this is gonna segue to one of the most important things in python which is functions okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at functions in math first then we'll jump into functions in Python. So let's say you are looking at a function f of x equals to 3x. That means any input that you put in, let's say 1, this function will give you back triple the amount. But what we're going to focus on is translating this particular math equation into English. Then we're going to translate it into Python because that would be much, you know, much easier for you to understand. So what this means is that let's say I have a machine that name is f. Let's say this functions machine's name f. We put in let's say one box. Therefore, you would expect three boxes at the end, and that's what that's exactly what's going to happen. You're going to have three boxes at the end. When you describe this machine, you say the input will be tripled by f so we have the input and then the output is the triple of the input and then the name is f this is important to recognize because when we are constructing the function itself we need three things so the three things are the input the output and name of the function itself so three things i'm going to show you an example let's say I'm constructing a function that returns double of what I give in. So in Python, what you'll write is def, that means define the name, let's say the name we call it the doubler of x, let's say the x is the input, right? And then we return 2 of x. So we have the name we have the input and then we have the output. So let's start with some examples. Let's say we are doing this function in math. How do you translate it into Python? Well, it is quite simple. You have the name here, you have the input and then you have the output. So uh, let me just search colors, D, E, F, the name itself, F, the input, and then the colon, make sure you have the colon here, right? So we return x whoops x to the power of x this is an important concept because for 90 percent of data science you'll be using something something called a function in a package therefore you need to understand how this even works so when you put in an x it will try to kind of use x and return something that is related to x okay so let's consider something a little bit different what we have here is going to be a multi-variable function that means it takes in two inputs instead of one so the results would be modified by these two things so let's consider x multiplied by y so just x y and when you write this in code it is the same idea you define the name let's say you want to find the area so you get the area function as the name area and then the height and then the length so you just return the multiplication of both of these. This is how you define a multivariable function in Python. So let's consider a realistic example. Let's say you are calculating something for a cashier. 
the number of units, price per unit, so price per unit, and also the discount. So when you come across these three things, you kind of think of it as, okay, this one needs three inputs, therefore it must be like F, X, Y, Z, right? Three inputs. And when you translate it into Python, it is the same idea. So how do you calculate this, the whole, the total price? I just call it the total price. So just T O T L. And then what we have here is units price per unit and the discount by logic. We can say that this one is just return the return units multiplied by PPU multiplied by discount. And that's what you're going to return in this total. So it can be uh, modeled in math, but you also can do it directly by just looking at it as definition from English. So let's consider something a little bit more difficult. Let's say you want to implement something in math. Let's say f of x equals to sine square x. It looks simple enough, but the problem is how the hell do you get sine? Well, when you Google it, and I'm pretty sure you're going to Google a lot of things during data science, right? So when you Google it, it says that, okay, you grab sine from this thing, math.sine, and then you have this particular function, right? But when you do it in Python, you get an error because math.sign doesn't work. It just doesn't exist. So what does this math.sign mean actually? This means that this sign function is grabbed from this package called math. So it's like a box. We call this thing a package. So when we grab signs from this package, it is an, it is a created function already. So you can just use math.sign. That's why when we do this, we call something called import. That means we grab this whole package import math. So when we import math, you can use any function that is math.something, even math.sign, math.cosine, anything that, you know, is in this particular package anyways. So when we want to implement this, we can firstly import in import math. That means we are grabbing the package itself. Then when you say, uh, I want to implement this def, the name f of x, and then sine square x. So you'll say return, we'll just get a bracket here. We're gonna open math. That means math dot, that means this means I'm grabbing it from a package math dot sign and then X. And at the very end, we are going to pull it to the power of two. So this is the whole thing here. And this is how you grab something from a package. All right, before I end off, I mean, this first part of the workshop, what we're going to look at is how to actually install NumPy and Pandas which is required for the next few parts of the course. So if you need to install anything, and let's say you're installing from Conda, which is Anaconda, you would have to run Conda install numpy instead of saying pip install numpy. So if you're installing through pip, you just install through pip. But if you're installing through Anaconda, it's recommended that you use Conda install numpy. So the main objective right now would be to run with you how to actually create a function instead of just uh, writing it down. So let's say you want to create a function that doubles things. So as you might know, you just say DEF. Let's, let's just call this the doubler and then the colon, make sure you have the colon and then you return to of X, right? Then you run it, make sure you run it. And now you have the function called doubler. When you call doubler on two, it'll return four. Call doubler on four, you get eight. You can also chain uh, functions like this. So it doubles what you have doubled. So quite interesting. So let's say you want to grab something from a package. Like what I said, you can import math. Let's say, okay, let's say we don't, we don't import math yet. Let's say you want to define something like sine two, which is going to be sine squared. Let's say you Googled it. Okay. You can actually grab it from here. So 
I, I know it works, like right now it runs, but when you try to call it, it's going to break. Because you don't have math sign uh, defined, and Python is uh, what you can call it a lazy language. That means it will only run this if you call it. So if you put in some garbage here, let me show you, it will still run. However, when you try to run it, it will not even work in the, in the first place. So sign two of two, it will just show you that that particular garbage isn't even defined in the first place. What we're going to do is we're going to import math. And then we can define our sign two now. Make sure to indent properly, by the way. And then you return math.sign. And if you're using Jupyter Notebook or some IDE, you can try to press tab and it will show you all of these particular functions. And some of them are self-explanatory, like cosine, uh, degrees, exponential, float, absolute, factorial, four, and so on. So you can select from here. But when you start to type it out, it will just narrow it down to what you need. So when you call sine two, it will return the sine and the squared of it. And that's how you actually import math. Let's say you want to import pandas, numpy at the same time. You can actually you know, chain commands like that instead of just doing it separately. And in order to use anything from any package, you can just press dot and press tab. Okay, so now it works. It took like 30 seconds. Okay, so now you can actually look at all of these particular functions that you can use. You can also Google it. But what happens if you have a package in a package? So that's an interesting thing. When you call numpy and you want to get random, you can go into that random again. That means the random is also a package. Numpy is a package, random is a package. So you can actually get two of these packages uh, in each other, which is you know, sometimes a bit confusing. So let's say I want to get a random int. So let's say you want to get a random int in between zero and you know 30 excluding 30, I think, uh, you can just do this. Yeah, so that's how you actually grab a package within a package. Next few videos, you'll be talking about how to actually use packages from pandas and numpy, and also how to load in things. So my part is going to cover until only uh, data preparation. Then next would be looking at how to visualize data. So that will be it for now.